That's right. You heard the title correctly. Today is the first anniversary of Baby Lemon Friends the movie. One whole year since I premiered pretty much my biggest and longest video ever on my channel. And it's probably the magnum opus of my channel. And I'm proud to be speaking to literally the two people who've helped me make this movie possible. My two dear friends who I consider very legendary people. Cameron Green and Marissa the Gem Fox. Hello, Ness. Hello, everyone. It's your favorite half Sonic character and half Steamy Universe character. It's Marissa the Gem Fox here. And hello, Greenies. This is Cameron. Cameron J. Green here, also known as Diamond Cammy. And salutations, Lamb Fam. Baby Lamb Creations here. <laughs> I just love how we're. <laughs> I just love how we're doing our channel intros. Oh yeah, I love doing mine better. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. In case you guys don't know, honestly, all three of us voice the main characters in the movie. I'm the voice of Baby Lamb. Hello, everyone. It's me, Baby Lamb. And also Cow. Uh, guys, you might want to cover your noses. And Ricky, even though I just pretty much use my regular voice. And uh, Donnie. Yeah, that's pretty much me, but with a much deeper voice. And Cameron is the voice of the lovely Belle Butterfly. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. And Marissa is the voice of Alice. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we on? <laughs> <laughs> you guys make me laugh. I know. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, first the first question I want to ask you is, how did it feel for you guys when I first asked you to voice your respective characters for the movie and then find yourselves playing them again for, like, multiple times after? Uh, hmm, that's a pretty good question there, Simon. Uh, hmm. I felt a bit odd yet nervous to do it because I actually never voiced, like, a different character besides I've actually been, like, doing impressions of other characters from different shows, TVs, and um, video games. But doing an original character has made me feel like, hey, this is actually pretty good. I always wanted to do this. Although I never watched the series of Baby Lamb and Friends, I never watched it before, so sorry. That's I really don't cool. know the whole lore about it. But yeah, it felt pretty good, you know? And for me, too, I um, usually do voice impressions for um, different Looney Tunes characters and Sega characters and um, even Disney characters. But um, I feel I felt the same way. I, like, freaked out because I was such a big fan of Baby Lamb Creations, but I've never Aww. watched the full Baby Lamb and Friends series to begin with. So I didn't know how the butterfly sounds like. So <laughs> It was kind of it was kind of new for me, but at the same time, I kind of got used to it as um, time progressed. And um, um, and Simon asked for me to do the vo to do the voice of Belle more times. Well, I think that's just like really wonderful, and I'm not sure if you guys actually knew about this, but when I first thought of someone who could voice both Belle and Alice, you two were literally the first and probably only people that came to mind. Like, I had you guys on my mind, like, God, I know you, this ex th these characters are perfect for you guys. And sure enough, I was right, because really, after hearing the many times you kept, f you voice those characters, and even other characters, I mean... I mean, I already knew you were talented, but I, I just keep getting blown away by how awesome you guys are. So the fact that you're still helping me out with Baby Lamb and Friends, you know, starting with the movie, that just makes me feel really, really honored. Well, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Nice. Okay, um... And uh, that's another thing I want to, like, point out. Because normally for, like, directors, when they, like, cast people to voice certain characters in, like, a movie or something, they usually, like, get, 
tell them what their character is supposed to sound like or something. But for me, that's completely different, you know, because even though I already know, like, what the character's personalities are and stuff like that, I gave you guys the creative freedom to, like, decide in your mind, like, how they should sound. Because really, I allow creativity. And like I said before, you guys are already talented. So I know that you'll do a wonderful job putting your own take on the characters. It's really an honor for me to That's join the, the Lab fam. Yeah, I mean... Um, even though I don't barely know the show, even though I don't know the whole storyline and the whole lore about it, I'm <laughs> really honored to be part of the show. Well, thanks. I didn't know anything about Baby Lamb and Friends until now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to get into the series, but it might take, I'm, I'm really lazy to watch anything, so basically I just don't know what to do. <laughs> That's understandable. Okay, so I another okay. So I'm sure you guys have like seen the whole movie, right? I mean, you guys were there when it premiered, right? Yeah, we were there. All right. So another question I have for you guys is, what's like your favorite part of like, of like the movie? What are you, what are you like favorite experiences and like the whole process of it? Easy. The baby lamb and the bell singing. I. Don't go breaking my heart. That was like really heartwarming. Oh, yeah, I agree. You know, there's I actually. Have... Oh. I actually have two favorite lines rock and roll and this one. Hold on, let me just. Oh, yeah, look at me. Look at them skills. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, favorite, my favorite line was from the, um, in the, from the beginning when the song didn't like actually start yet. There was a bride in the beginning saying, Here's a song by a gay guy. <laughs> <laughs> that made me lose it. It's funny because it's true. And, you know, there's actually like an interesting backstory to why I included that scene of Baby Lemon and Belle singing at the end of the movie. Originally, it wasn't supposed to be at the end of the movie. Because by that time, like towards the end of July, um, I already like pretty much finished like the whole like story of the movie. But then I saw the um sort of heart the heartbreaking news that uh, Rusty Taylor, the voice of Minnie Mouse, passed away on like la July of last year, and I was looking for some videos some for like to pay tribute to her, and I saw this one scene of Minnie Mouse and Elton John singing "Don't Go Breaking My Heart" from a 1988 Disney special, and it gave me an idea of how to pay tribute to her by doing a whole parody of that scene in the movie. And in the end, it turned out pretty well. You made a very wise choice. Thank you. Oh, uh, it's pretty interesting. Also, Elton John was there. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Believe it or not, that's actually how I got into his um, music in the first place. Believe it or not. So, huh. really, I have Minnie Mouse to thank for getting me into my favorite musician. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's kind of crazy. Wow. It? So, uh, any other questions you have in mind? Hmm. Let's see. Well, not really, except... It's kind of like, um, oh, I did have something I wanted to bring up about the movie. Let's see. Okay. Well, okay. So I, I'm not sure if you already know about this, but when I first started my channel, a few months after I started my channel back in 2016, and I started making Baby Lamb and Friends, like the series, I already had ideas of making a Baby Lamb and Friends movie. And I even recorded some like footage of it. It was like a title and everything. But unfortunately, it didn't really work out because back then, I wasn't a good video editor back then. And I, of course, my channel was small. And it wasn't really like, but so yeah, it didn't work out for me. So I had to like cancel the whole thing and then wait until three years later, in which I finally announced that I'm making a Babyland Friends movie. And just here we are, here we are now, a year after the movie premiered. And honestly, looking back on it, I'm just really glad I, I waited until the appropriate time to make a Baby Lamb and Friends movie. When the series was on long enough for there to be a movie made out of it. When I know enough people to help me out with it. It was just, I feel like I made the right decision. 
So, because if I were to make this like three years earlier or four years earlier, then it probably would not be as good as it is now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it takes a lot of time to like think about your decisions and like、um, plan them out before you actually do something. And, I mean,、um, I think it's good. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay. <laughs> It. I mean, it takes a while for you to think of the plot and the storyline. I mean, that's how I'm working on my latest movie. I think I've told you guys before the Gotcha movie. Oh yeah, you told me about it before. I think I remember you showed、yeah, me some、I'm, character designs for it. Um, I don't、yeah. remember. I'm. I'm still. I'm. Oh, I. I probably. I probably never told the、uh, Cameron about that, but um. Still, I'm still working on that, and I know how it is, Simon. Working on a movie takes a lot of hard progress. I mean, look at me. I'm still working on the storyline, including the characters and their dialogue. I've um, I've thought of a lot of movies before, and none of them I even I didn't even finish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang! Wait, Not、no. even the storyline. <laughs> wow. Ah, I see. Well, that's. Well, that's understandable, because for me, like throughout the whole process of making Babylon Friends a movie, it took like practically five months for me to finish everything, from like the filming to the editing to casting people to editing the lines and everything. It was, it was like a very long process. I don't think I've ever spent this much time on the, anything I've posted on my channel before. So I guess that just explains why this was the biggest video I've ever posted on my on Baby Lamb Creations. And for、yep. me, even if I do make a movie, it will like probably probably take forever. And、um, right in the middle of what like a storyline, it would say you need more space required. I don't even have any money for more space on my phone. Man, I know how that is. <laughs> oh wow. It's a serious problem for me.、Um, yeah, the storage problem is always serious. I mean, I tried taking a few like um snap photos of the scene because Gotcha is like one of those stop motion animation thingies, and I tried doing that, but well, I needed more storage, and that sucks. I have to get rid of all my stuff that was on my phone. Don't you hate it when um there you like delete all of your storage and it says and it still says more space required. Yeah, that was ex- that was exactly me. The first time I attempted to make a Baby Lamb and Friends movie, because it literally took up all all the space on my iPad, and it just didn't work out very well. And you know, it's and game it's kind of interesting because I know you you both haven't really like been exposed to the series before I casted you guys as the characters you are now, but before. Like the first four seasons of Baby Lamb and Friends, I did pretty much like everything on my own. I did all the voices, the the, the lines, the filming, the editing, and yeah, I I was practically like a one man band for like f- four years until I, but, I <clears throat> and heck, I was it's even. It's good to have your. Oh. It's good to have your friends involved in something, and so because <clears throat> that's the same with me. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's true, because honestly, things are like much better when there's like other people involved. I mean, heck, I used I even I used to voice Belle when I was before, and I just kept cringing at how stupid they sounded because I suck at doing female voices. <laughs> and... I I actually I actually need to go back and hear that again because I know you did the voice of Belle, and I think Alice in the Halloween special like. The curse of the Werelamb. Yeah, that was the last time I did their the, the voices, and I actually need to hear that again. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, it was just cringy, and but yeah, honestly, when I casted you guys as Belle and I was, I felt relieved that I didn't have to voice them anymore, and I could finally watch a Baby Lamb and Friends video without cringing my butt off. Because honestly, you guys are like great at doing. Female voices. I mean, I know Cameron's a boy, but but still, I mean, still, you. I'm just glad I don't have to voice him anymore. You guys do them much better than me. Yeah, I yeah. printed some of my older videos as well, 
and they're like really stupid and cringy. <laughs> I, I think the only videos that I cringed at was that the meme videos that I made of like I've seen a lot of animators make their own meme videos like um pusher meme. I mean don't don't ask how I see a lot of these meme things. They're they're all like they're like animations and I tried doing the same thing but with pictures and I was like what the hell was I thinking? Like, what the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> yeah, uh, I remember them. Those, uh, I remember when I did those, uh, like audio, the audio music videos, um, like five four years ago. And I like really cringed because, because the the Bugs Bunnies and Daffy Duck voices I was doing were like, were like, um, were what not expected so i have to cover my ears so that i can't hear what's going on in that recording because that sucked yeah wow but honestly even though sometimes like honestly i feel like even if you tend to cringe at some of the older videos that you make it also gives you a sense of like accomplishment knowing how much you've evolved and improved as a content creator like the more you continue like making these kinds of videos whether it's voice impressions or skits or animations or anything like that i mean it shows that you're still improving like every single day and that's what i like to look back on especially when it comes to like how far i've gone in my channel hmm. that is that is true yeah. True. Uh, so, any more questions? Sorry if I'm just asking. <laughs> no, it's fine. You know, there was um, there is another question I have. Did when okay. you when you guys like finished doing the voice like recording your lines and you finished seeing the movie, did you guys expect yourselves to to find yourselves voicing the characters again to this very day for like? to become like the official voices for the entire series or did you like think that you're just gonna be like oh like a one-time thing since it's like a movie or something i uh, i thought that like it was gonna be a one-time thing to be honest uh honestly i didn't know because i was just like so steady up with my work and all that stuff i think this was before the whole thing like me at my home thing thingy you know but i felt a bit like well i'm not trying to put it this way i thought it was like a one-timing thingy too but you know after doing that i felt so better about about like after the whole drama with some few things that i've been through and i felt so much better because i actually felt like i was someone else besides me for once yeah i felt proud i i felt pretty proud too of what I did during the recording. Well, that's really wonderful. And I'm sure you guys really enjoy like voicing, like voicing in Baby Lemon Friends. And you don't, do you ever like get tired of it? Or do you get tired of being recognized as like, hey, look, it's the voice of Belle or hey, it's the voice of Alice or something. Like, do you ever feel that way? No. Well, um, me, it kind of feels like good because I'm getting noticed more. Back then, I didn't really get noticed. But now that I'm improving with my vocal, vocal voice acting skills, I feel, I feel like I'm improving on my work. And, I, and the whole point of my life is to, like, get noticed somehow. Um, for me, hmm, that's a pretty good question. What was the question again? I need to, like remember what it was like will you ever like get tired of being recognized as like for the work you do in my series like if like being recognized as a voice of ours mm -hmm. uh, that's a pretty good question there uh no not really because well i have like literally like 425 subscribers now i think thanks to you that happened uh I don't get really tired, but if it gets in my way, like, too many times that they keep calling me Alice or, like, reference my name as Alice, like, I think I saw that one comment in the Halloween special 2020, um, then I would get bothered by it. Well, 
Yeah, that's kind of like how I feel like when people refer to me as Baby Lamb. Like sometimes I get like I I get like annoyed a lot when I when I hear people like refer to me as Baby Lamb as he's my persona, even though he's not. I mean I know I voice him. He's the mascot of my channel and all, but really all Baby Lamb is is just the creator. I mean sorry, all Baby Lamb is is just. He's just a character, and I'm the creator. But in a way, I feel like Baby Lamb has become part of me. Nah, Sorry, it's... someone walked in. That's why I had the text. Nah, it's fine. Okay, because I was just about to, like, move on to, like, another question that I wanted to ask you. Both of you. Actually. Okay. Okay. I wonder, All right. has, has your involvement in Baby Lamb and Friends, the movie, in any way, has it helped to... El to like you know elevate your youtube presence or your youtube career i mean not that it needs elevating but has it ever like elevated your like presence on youtube i think so um maybe maybe it, it'll help uh, i was so desperate of um like getting more than a like something hundred subscribers and and I, I needed something to help me elevate my um, YouTube popularity, so I thought if it, if it helps me, um, if it helps me get m more noticed, then I'll do it. Um, I was I was such a big fan of um, the Baby Lamb Creations content on YouTube in general, so I thought I'd give it a shot. Okay. I had to get ice cream because. Because the ice cream truck was there. Oh, you got ice cream? <laughs> you got ice cream? And a, plus a blow pop. Why did you say so for me? What a coincidence. Sorry, but you gotta, you gotta be over here to get some. <laughs> it's it's kind of coincidence. I'm joking, I'm joking. It's I'm joking. <laughs> Right. Don't it, take it serious. No, yeah, don't worry. We're, it's cool. It's kind of coincidental, actually, because I, I just got ice cream from McDonald's like an hour ago. Man, I used to eat ice cream back at McDonald's, but now I go to Whataburger. <laughs> yeah, I used to go to McDonald's for the French fries. I love the French fries. Yeah, me you too. You don't know me because I'm the French fry queen. I eat all the French fries. Every time my parents, every time we order something from Waterburner, I'm usually the one to take my parents' fries or my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I used to like go to. Um, I used to like go to McDonald's every time I want French fries because they are like the kings and queens of French fries. You know. Agreed. They're so like they're so like crispy and, and salty. I mean, the good kind of salty. <laughs> Now I go to Jim's Burgers for the fries because their um, fries are much more like what is it that what thick they're more thick. Anywho, shall we continue? Yeah, you know. Anyways, uh, to answer uh, Cameron's question, uh, uh, he asked me like what happened to that Chipmunks that Alvin the Chipmunks video I posted on my ch channel. I think I posted on May of two thousand. Oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah, I think I've heard about that. Didn't it get removed? Yeah, unfortunately, it got copy strike too. It got a copyright strike by the company that produced Alvin and the Chipmunks. So that was the uh -oh. first time I got a copyright strike, which was like literally the day after my birthday on 2018. Uh oh. Yeah, um, the, um, the company who's. Um, the, the company who's. Um, the company whose name I can't say correctly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think I remember telling you guys, I think, I don't think I told Cameron, but I got two copy strikes from the Japanese music from, that was from a fan-made SpongeBob anime. I was like, why? I wanted to do that too. If, if they can do it, then so can I. Oh, yeah, wow. I get in trouble for that. <laughs> Oh my god. Bro, it literally makes no freaking sense at all. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, I used to um Yeah, the copyright strikes um well, to me, the copyright um to me the copyright claims are kind of like um the copyright strikes. 
So um, I had to like delete them. Um, so I had to delete them because they um like they d- like destroyed my inspiration. Mm-hmm. So I had to like um. Man, that's, that's terrible. Oh, I didn't oh. want um, I didn't want that Monster Mash video mis- music video to get copyrighted. So I, they um like deleted the the music. Ah, okay. Also, also, can I tell you guys something that I had never showed anyone on YouTube before? Um, sure. Okay. Um, so this happened when Sia Arc movie that I think I told you guys was getting really big and popular. I'm not sure if I told you this about the character Sia, but Sia is actually a character from Har- I know nothing about it. Hold on. Yeah. Wait, can you hear me? Oh, sorry. I, I couldn't hear you for like a moment. <laughs> it's probably my <laughs> it's probably my connections or something. My bad. Alright, let me ask you again. Uh, don't you Simon, don't you remember the character I told you about, Sia from uh Hyrule Warriors? Yeah, I think I think I remember you telling me something about that. Um yeah, I told you about that and I think this is I try to make the opening theme and when i did that i immediately got copyright strike like hold up what do you mean how did this happen under one second oh wow like how like i barely uploaded the video and this is what i get <laughs> oh karma's a jerk you know yeah you know it's kind of funny that we're like all talking about like our experiences with copyright strikes because you know that's part of the reason why I had to remove that uh, Looney Tunes That's All Folks compilation video because not because it got copy struck by Warner Brothers, but because I had to delete it myself because earlier this year, nine of my videos got, mm-hmm. my, I had nine videos based on Mr. Rogers that were removed by the Fred Rogers company that, and I ended up getting two copyright strikes. I mean, it was, had I posted more Fred Rogers videos then my channel would have literally been dead. But thankfully, that didn't happen. But I panicked and I tried to remove as many videos as possible to avoid any more copyright issues. But thankfully, I don't have any strikes anymore. And surpri- and my channel's still up and running. So I'm very grateful for that. That was literally like a... I literally dodged a bullet there. Uh-oh. I think I heard someone over at, um, over at Ms. Marissa's mic. Sorry about that. Nah, it's fine. I'm going to try and mute myself for a bit. That's cool. That's fine. Yeah. So, yeah, basically when I tried to... So, yeah. I, it wasn't really often that I got copyright strikes, but when I got those two copyright strikes, I, like... I literally got like a, I panicked and I had like a lot of stress and anxiety. I even had nightmares about my channel being deleted because, well, basically, even though there's like, it's not like my baby line creations isn't like my life or anything, but in a way it has become like my livelihood because, well, I don't know, I guess I dedicate so much to like, for making videos and to all my friends and fans who support my channel and if i were to lose all that in just so quickly then i would really i would just be upset like a lot oh no i i i am was kind of freaking out too because i was kind of freaking out too because i thought you were um your youtube channel would get terminated because of those um strikes i didn't want you to um I was almost going to make a video um, called hashtag save, save BLC because I really s- cared about your channel so much. I um, almost made a video. Aww. I almost made a video of um, you um, getting close to your last copyright strike. I mean, that, I felt bad too. And I was like raging. I mean, look at me. I'm the shortest temper person on earth. Not literally, but just, you know, I have that same anger that I have that's been passed down from generations. And look at me. I literally got mad at the part 
where I think I made this animation of time lapse meme with me and Baby Lamb, aka Simon. I know he's not you. I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. I know. Dude. Um, <laughs> I felt so mad because someone spam reported my video for one reason. Like it didn't have violence or anything. Is it because of my character? Yeah. This to me, like, what did I do to you to make you this so angry? Like, like, um, like that character Darth Vader. Yeah, that's totally. Understood. If you look in the, oh, if you look in the chat, um, if you look in the chat, you can see what I, um, what it, um, what I am almost did. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, you know, save BLC. Hashtag save BLC. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen that before. No, wait. You know, you know, Cameron, knowing that you want to make a, a video like for, for me, and even if you didn't make it, the fact that you thought of making it and doing all this for me, you know, that, that just made me, I'm, I'm, I, that just made me feel really happy. If I were to, I would hug you right now, but the screen's blocking the way. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, that was a good one. Thanks. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. Thanks. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> anyways. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Okay. Anyways, I think I I know Cameron answered this question already, but um, Marissa um, has has participated yes. has being part of Baby Lamb and Friends the movie in any way helped to like elevate your presence online like your youtube career had to like i mean you're oh yes well you you're talking to the girl that has 200 no wait why did i say 200 i already passed 400 that. you are you're talking um... 425 subscribers places been through sad times and all that but when you arrived and told me to be the voice of alice i was like well this is different for me because i never did it before and when i did it and well, after seeing the whole thing in the movie, I was like, you know, this really improved me. I feel like doing more of Alice's voice than other than other any other character I could do. And well, after after all of that, I felt so proud. Yet, like, I mean, it felt like you were the only one that gave me the chance to get myself back on my feet, like to redeem my. I mean, I felt so proud when I felt part of the show and doing Alice's voice was pretty fun. It felt like she's like the um, the teenager version of me since, well, you know, I'm kind of like a teen, but, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. Like the fun side of me. The plot for Baby Lamb and Friends. Because, I mean, you know, the Dark Slayer, he's like, he's trying to be a bad person and he actually succeeds in it. But then it just didn't turn out well for him because really nothing good. He he realized this and nothing good ever comes mm -hmm. out of being bad. And of course, it was Baby Lamb and his friends who taught him that. And at the end, he redeemed himself. He made a change. Yeah, he did. Which is why I made a which is why I included that song from Steven Universe in the movie. <laughs> I mean, I like that movie, Steven Universe movie. I even saw it. The only song I liked was uh, Drift Away. It has to do with, I think it has like, to do with the toxic friend stuff. Well, why, 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 why do I say that? Because, well, Pink Diamond, a.k.a. Rose Quartz, leaves Spinell behind. That's basically my own friends leaving me behind, yeah. you know? I mean, it hurts that way. If this were to happen in a Baby Lamb Friends episode, like I told you about my character Maria, right? Yeah. I told you about her. I mean, imagine, imagine being forgotten for like one million years or like what Spinell said. She said something like six million years. I think it was thousands, thousands of, of years. Yeah, thousands of years. Yeah, I haven't seen I mean, the not... Steven Universe movie, so I don't know a thing about it. Okay. Oh, it's a good movie. So, um, yeah. 
imagine being left there for thousands of years and you feel like they're coming back to you right it's wrong oh yeah just honestly looking back on how like baby lemon friends the movie turned out and how everything really came together seeing the responses people got how much it i think how much it changed even for me i also i'm just really proud of like how everything turned out and honestly i don't think the movie would be even as half as good if you two weren't involved in it at all and i i mean that now that that's out of the way let's ask let's ask a few fun questions i'll go first uh since it is the first anniversary of this movie and me being the first time being part of it actually i'm gonna ask everyone this question um now that we're all here making new episodes um what was my question all right so ever since i became well sort of like a co-writer have you ever thought of like having more ideas come from me and from cameron as well well yeah i mean sh sure i mean i don't mind you both giving like ideas for episodes because you know i want to make sure you guys are as part of the show as much as possible i don't want you guys to be like just being the voices or something i mean i want you to contribute to the show as much as much as you can i mean if you want to that is it's it's, it's yeah, up to you I'm, really i'm yeah. gonna say this now ever since i was like thinking of being the voice of alice and i thought to myself the possibilities of what can happen and i said to myself like i think in my head marissa you only live once so i had to take the risk <laughs> yeah you know hold on be right back yeah, now all the bad stuff is in the way, we can continue with the fun stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, I want to make sure this is a wholesome, like, anniversary. I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to, like, be all depressing or anything because, you know, yes, we've all been through, like, some hard times. But, you know, we're all still here. We're still safe. We're still, we're still healthy. We're hanging in there. And really, that's really... And we're still oh. friends, right? Of course. That will never change. Your friendship, where your friendship, your friendship means a lot to me, Simon, and I really appreciate that. Thank my, you. My feelings exactly, Cameron. Words cannot describe how grateful I am to call you my friend. So I just got myself some chips, and they're funyuns. Ooh, that's nice. Ooh. <laughs> 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 I can tell you I can try and do an evil impression of a laugh. <laughs> like a... <laughs> oh, that's good. That's really good. Uh, how about I, mean, I, I, would, I would be how great about for doing another villain. How about I'm just mine? saying. <laughs> the laugh, that's, that's the nice. laugh that you did... It kind of sounds like the game that I used to play on the Nintendo 64, Glover. It has to do with this um black glove that turned evil. I mean, it used to be good, and then it turned evil. Uh-oh. <laughs> wow. So it has that same, like, it has that same laugh, but much more creepier with the effect. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny that we're talking, like, about viewing laughs, because I try to give the Dark Slayer a menacing, like, evil laughter, but... But I suck at doing like an evil laughter, so which. But I guess it makes sense since the Dark Slayer isn't really like a Ow. a villain. He's not like a professional or anything, so of course he won't have like a professional evil laugh or anything. I mean, not gonna lie, and the Dark Slayer did have an evil laugh. His would sound like a wailing wail. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he were to have an evil laugh, he would have a wailing whale noise mixed with a hybrid of a dolphin. <laughs> that, that's... Oh my god. It would go like this. It would go like this. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> 
That's funny. That is so hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I the villain would be I a would... freaking mixed hybrid of a whale and a dolphin, and I would like to give him a name. His name will be Charlie the Whale Dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I would, I would not run away from that the evil villain. I wouldn't think it was evil at all. Yeah, it's hard for me to take a per an evil laugh like that seriously. I mean, I would do it if that was a villain. <laughs> to each their own. I would be back to being the villain. I don't mind if I'm an anti-hero or a villain. Or natural or a hero, doesn't matter. I can do the evil laugh still. Well, that is just, that's impressive. Uh, yeah, that's the same with me. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I, I like have every category of every superhero character. It's like that game I used to play, DC Universe. Yeah, um, on... Bell, um, Bell is like the sweetest butterfly in the world. It would, it would part be like, it wouldn't be um, natural if she had like a, this professional um, evil laugh. So I gave her like this um, evil laugh. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's just really what that's just really wonderful. I I love the fact that you made Belle sound adorable even when she's trying to like do an evil laughter in that Halloween episode. Yeah, but it was fun for her, right? <laughs> it was very fun, exactly. It was it was pretty good. I've always wanted to do more evil laughs. Actually, hold on. You know what I just figured out? Why? I sound like Alice Pennington, but if she was like an adult already, like with a deeper voice, and this is her right now. I don't want to go out to get up for work. I'd rather just stay in my hotel. Why the heck won't this key start up my car? Please start up the car! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that was actually actually a series of oh, how was growing up, she would have a hard time getting a job and then have, having a hard time getting her car started up. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, This is my art. This is my R O, this is my R O F L already laugh. <laughs> you would have a hard time breathing. <laughs> Usually for me, if I just laugh, I just I just can't help but do a goofy laugh. Like I'll, all of a sudden, like I just be all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Same for me. Uh, like um. I would like get this. I would like find a like a really hilarious video, and I can't help but but do a, an R O F L or a laugh like the one who has a hard time breathing. Oh yeah, I know. That is just wonderful. All right, guys. I think I have a question for this question. It's for Simon. Uh, oh, you have a question for me. Uh, Oh my god, don't oh my do god. it with that voice. That? If you do it with that voice, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> I will lose it if you do it with that voice. <laughs> what was that? Oh god. I can't anyway. Help. I can't help it. What was anyway. that? When I gave you the idea of the Halloween deal maker, basically I posted that video like on October first, two thousand and twenty. Oh yes. I think I showed you yeah. Yeah, I saw it. And when that when that gave you the idea of making her, I wanted to make Mar Maria, aka the Halloween deal maker, or how Baby Lance says it, uh, HDM. That's funny. Yeah. It's kind well, of funny. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. You go. It's kind of funny because one time when I was recording the lines as a baby lamb while editing it, I accidentally said HBD instead of HDM as Baby Lamb, which doesn't make any sense, so I had to re-record that. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. millions of times until you got it right? <laughs> it accidentally <laughs> happened this probably once. Had to... Probably had to do it 50 times, didn't you? No, I had to do it like a thousand <laughs> times. 
think no, like one million years. Anyways, uh, back to my question. When I when I wanted to make Maria, I wanted everyone. I mean, even though Maria is technically a fictional character I made up, I want everyone to know that Maria has the same emotions as everyone else, like as human. And when I told you the backstory of Maria, it felt like when I explained it. It felt so much better because it actually felt like I was like Maria. I mean, when I told you about the story of Maria and everything else, I think that that actually got you interested in the story because that's what I want to do. I want to interest people of of writing their own story one of these days, like doing their own uh, fantasy stuff. You know? Yeah, that's why I think you could have like really a great potential as like a, a writer or like a like an like an author or something of like maybe like a like a book like a book writer you know exactly yeah, i was thinking the same thing i mean i got the same skill from my dad my dad i think mean, used to write a lot and now i have it and look at me i've been making a lot of things and happening and when i made maria it felt like Everyone loved her. I mean, everyone loved her because she has she has the same reaction feeling as everyone else. Like she has the same happiness as everyone else, like you and um you, Cameron. Yeah. I mean, how did you feel when I told you about the whole backstory of Maria, Simon? It just completely changed my perspective of her. It, it. I just knew. I knew, like. I learned so much about Maria that I did not know about before when you first introduced me to the ha the Halloween deal maker like I mean it blew you away right literally yeah when I made Maria I want everyone to have that same feeling what Maria is feeling you know Oh yeah I totally understand. Again sorry I mean Simon what? Now that you've learned about Maria's backstory, how did you actually feel? How did I actually feel? Well, honestly, I kind of feel bad for how, for what happened to her at the end of the second part of the Baby Lemon Friends Halloween special. How she, and once the contract was ripped, and she just literally blew out of existence. And, I mean, I honestly feel like there should be a... I honestly wish I honestly feel like I could include Maria again in a future episode with you voicing her, of course, because you know I feel like yeah she would be like perfect yeah. to be a character. And if this was possible, hear me out. If that was actually a canon episode, then this would explain the whole story of Maria, and everyone can get to know of who Maria was and how she ended up this way, and how she ended up becoming evil and corrupted and. How her friends betrayed her. I mean, that's what I want everyone to know. Like, how she went through, like, how everyone else went through the same, the same pain that she went through. I mean, the reason why Maria was created was to show everyone that you're not alone in this. Exactly. And, well, doing Maria's voice makes me feel like I'm a kid again because <laughs> Maria has that same happy and positive and like she has that pep in her step like it like when you're young and energetic you have that pep in your step and you can do whatever you want I mean that's how I felt when I was little like all of her innocence like she was so innocent <laughs> she's like Spinel but only not crazy insane to kill Steven yeah that's a good thing yeah. 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 So if this was possible, hear me out. If that episode becomes canon, then maybe, just maybe, in a future episode, if I could give this name a, a title name known as, um, trying to give a title name for the future episode, you know, uh, for this future title name, I would call it An Old Friend Returns. Because... Maria was there, 
That's a and good yeah, she, that's good. She did do that. Yeah. She did do that. And yeah. she I also, re- what? I also <laughs> made something I also made something canon on my on my channel too. Is when um remember um how we did the voice chat and um Tails and Maria became friends. Oh yeah. Yes. I, I kinda wanted wanted to do it like that and um like um Maria like brings a brings a friend like Maria like is like Maria is, returns. Maria returns. When Maria returns, she um she brings an old friend. She brings a friend with her, and her, and his name is Tails. Everyone calls him Tails because he has two tails. Um, yeah, but not from the Sega universe. Um, from um, from <clears throat> maybe we should um, make um some of the set the um, the Sega characters are, but not um, but not to like steal away um copyright. Maybe we could like um um change some of the characters and make it like our make it canon to our universe yeah we can, we can make another universe yeah we can make like an alternate reality version like like how every like how everyone did the same for undertale don't ask how i know about those just don't it's cool yeah um, yeah so, like um sonic can have some like really cool singing skills um tails as is um maria's friend Charmy mm-hmm. can like be the happy go lucky kid who's um always ready for adventure and cream can be like the innocent one more calm and um and Maria could have that personality of where I mean literally Cameron said Maria has nine lives like cat so kind of like Morgana <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much I mean Simon here's my idea the episode name I gave you was the uh, "An Old Friend Returns." Yeah, an old I friend think returns. If I could get the story correct, yeah. If I could get the story correctly, now hear me out. Story has to do with I think some people visiting Maria's well grave after the incident happened. Yet her parents do not know what happened to her. Still, they are still witnessing that, and well, they decide to leave until Maria appears. Yeah, no one sees her. Why? Because I gotta say, she's a ghost. That's all. Ghost. And of course, she felt so bad of after hurting others to making them into monsters of costumes of their own, like how Maria did to um, Jesse and Sally. I mean, when she did that, she had no regrets for that. I mean, that's what happens. That was stage two anger. I mean, Stage one for her was betrayal. Stage two was anger. Stage three was, well, um, being free. Like but revival. Now, yeah, but now at this point, she thinks to herself, like, this is wrong. No one still knows about me. And everyone thinks I'm still good, but I'm not. So Maria gets the idea of visiting her old friends. She accidentally bumps into, I think... Donnie, I think she accidentally, and Donnie, like, the clearly only one who could see. Like, was that an echo? <laughs> that was an echo. <laughs> 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 nice. Nice. So basically, let me tell you again. Um, so I think she bumps into either Alice or Donnie. Either way, I'm fine with that. She she bumps into either one of them, like Donnie or, or Alice. Belle. Or Belle, Belle, possibly. And, well, they're there, or Alice or Belle or anyone are frightened by them because literally they're the only ones who can see her. Maria tries to explain, but they f- end up fleeing. So I guess Maria was still a ghost, but she has to find a way to try and communicate. And that's how she became that plush bunny that Alice was trying to record. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. I mean, how, I mean, I mean, why? I mean, how come her? Uh, how come the bunny toy moved its head? And you know that's her. And when she becomes the plush bunny, she tries following them, but 
There is one sneaky problem. The plush body does not have any bones. Basically, she can't move. Oh. So she has to find a way to get herself moving. So she finds this weird mechanic shop and goes in for no reason. Thinking it was safe, but it um, has a little risk to it. Yeah. But it was all worth it because now she has robotic bones in the plushie, so now she can move. Don't well, ask how Maria managed to get through without being caught by the security cameras or the security guards. <laughs> yeah. That makes me laugh. That makes me laugh. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay. And meanwhile, back, Baby Lamb and the others still remember of what happened to them on that Halloween day. And Alice begins to wonder because lately... And here's this personality I give her now. Alice starts to worry, like, she, if she might return. But then she starts reading a newspaper about the missing, which, which was Mariam, the missing child. And she decides to go out for fresh air. But when she saw the plush bunny moving, she was like, Oh, hell no. No, 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 no. Hell no. I'm leaving. Nope. No, packing my bags. Packing my bags. <laughs> Where's my bag? I ain't doing this. No. Yeah, that's understandable. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if that was actually real, that would be an alternate ending. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, yeah, that, that is pretty <laughs> hilarious. Not gonna lie. So, I have some ideas I'll, up my sleeve as well. Cool. I mean, I still have that idea of where, like, um, Stitch and Phil go on a like treasure like a hunt to get the orb back from Alice. Basically like a ghost that lives in that orb, like an evil spirit, you know? Like um it reminds me of that um Pokemon episode, I think, where Ash Ketchum finds this orb and like this evil ghost possesses him. I've seen it before. I've seen it before. Anyways, uh back to the idea. Basically, Maria is the only one who could find um, Alice. Alice tries to explain, like, who are you? That's when Al that's when Maria, like, comes out of the plushie and says, I'm Maria. I was, well, she didn't want to say her name because she didn't want to make her mad. So, but she did anyways, saying that she was a Halloween deal maker. Alice immediately freaks out. And like, all right, all right, what are you doing up this time? It's not even Halloween anymore. What are you doing over here again? <laughs> <laughs> if it was like that, that would be funny. That would be funny, you know? Yeah, that would mm -hmm. be That would be pretty funny. Okay. It would be crazy. Yeah. That would be like a blooper scene. That would be like a blooper scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty. Uh, we, can we can also add um, Daniel's animation of them uh, freaking out because of the Halloween deal maker. Oh, wait, what? Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> yep. Yeah. That... All right. That would be Daniel's special guest appearance. Yes. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. Anyways, when they start uh, talking, when they start talking about who they really are, like Alice explains her backstory, and then, well, not really her backstory, but who she is to to rem to make sure she remembers. And well, Maria actually tells her full backstory, and I'm actually thinking of animating her backstory. So as I was saying, Maria actually fully tells her backstory, and I was thinking of actually animating, or maybe you can try and animate the scene of where uh, Maria gets pushed off of the to the waterfall, like showing flashback stories. I've always wanted to do that, you know. Yeah, I can be like the voices of um, um, Jesse and Sally. The police. I want you. I want to hear the best Jesse voice you got. I mean, she's like one of. The, okay, let me tell you her personality first. Jesse is more like the. She sounds like one of those um like popular girls who have like Instagram or social media like Twitter or Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and she sounds a bit mean. And uh, so here's the voice line for um Cameron for doing Jesse. Um, so. 
she has this like mean temper she's short-tempered and she doesn't like people who get in her way and she sounds like if she was like a greedy person filled with money and all basically having a fame thought of having being pride like kind of reminds me of the anime seven deadly sins there's pride wrath lust ivany um greed sloth and gluttony basically she's one of them she's pride meaning that she'll so what's the line okay all right here's the line the setting takes place the setting takes place at the waterfall at the whirlwind waterfall the most popular one ever and i wish it was real because it has a beautiful rainbow on it anyways so uh continue asking yourself some questions yeah Honestly, I think I just have like um, really, um, like uh, I think I just have like one last question really for like this interview, um, and that is, well, what are your like plans for like this like like contributing with the series going forward? And I mean, like. Like, what do you plan on doing for the future? That's really all I want to know. Honestly, I have no, no idea. <laughs> Me neither. I, I mean, literally have no idea. I mean, thinking about my channel, like, one of these days, I might want to become one of my famous, one of my favorite animators, and that's Lady Tila. And Lady Tila, let me tell you all about her. She is really good, and she actually made a book of her own, and that's what inspired me to make my own, like, my own stories. When I saw her book, her book is known as Strong Hearts and Mandatory, basically a story has to do with three um, animal cat felines, and of course, the uh, venture goes wrong when, they're been, when they've been attacked by, I think it's, he's known as, known as, a, as like a spider monkey name is, named Curiosity. And the three names of these feline, felines, now don't laugh, because these are actually names, and it's part of a song I've heard. Has anyone ever heard of radi uh, Video Kill the Radio Star? I no. think it sounds familiar, but I don't think I know about it. All right, let me tell you. The big one, the big feline, is named Video, and she's like a, I think it's like a short temper feline girl. The middle one, which is like a short, like a middle age, I think his name is Pictures, and he has a blue and orange eye, basically having a different color eye. But due, but due to that, why? Is because he, he originally had both orange eyes, but due to having the magic from Curiosity, he has one blue eye. And, well, Pictures is actually the one that broke Radio's heart, basically, like, breaking up with her. And he's actually... In the series of the book, he actually died in the first book. I'm not even joking. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. And the last one, Radio. She's like a small, um, like, royal feline. But she kind of died by getting attacked by video. And funny thing is, she does come back to life, actually, in the second book. She actually comes back to life. She comes back to life in the second book. And that, that was like, whoa! Whoa. This story's good. I was like, like, bro, I needed to get these books. They're interesting. <laughs> that sounds very dark and very interesting at the same time. I'm not. But it had, it has its moments. Basically, the first book has to take place of like three felines getting the the crystal hearts. Basically, there's like shards everywhere. But curiosity ruins the moment. You know. That's what villains do. Yeah. However, in that story, the villain wins, actually. Curiosity. Dang. He actually wins because his plan was successful. Video attacked Radio. Video then attacked Pictures by throwing throwing him in the fire. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> like, why? I mean, you guys have been working together. Well, all of a sudden, you're killing each other? What is this? Call of Duty? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what is this? Call of Duty? <laughs> what is this? Call of Duty? What is this? Duty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, I All think... right, I'm gonna... Oh, sorry. 
continue. Oh, well, I think there's just like really one one more last question for like this entire interview. And now, do you have like any advice you want to give for anyone who wants to like create a YouTube channel and start making videos like just like you guys and myself? Like, what, do you have any advice for them? Um. Um, you want me to go first, or you want camera to go first? It, it doesn't really matter. Alright, uh, so here's my advice, here's my advice. <clears throat> Listen here, if you want to become a successful YouTuber, or make any types of videos, gaming videos, music videos, AMD, M MMD videos, basically animation but with 3D effects, <laughs> or any type type of videos, gotcha videos or reaction videos, gaming videos, um, commentary videos, anything. If you want to do all that, you got to keep going. I mean, don't make the same mistakes. Don't like yell at other people. Like, don't make the same mistakes of how other people did. Like, basically ranting and doing all those venting stuff. Like ranting at other people and all that stuff for no reason. I mean, back then I was stupid. So. Here's my advice. Don't, you you only live once. If you want to make a YouTube channel, you got to do it. If you want to risk making it, you got to do it. You only live once, my friend. You only live once, my friend. You want to make it happen? Make it happen. You want to keep going with it? Keep going with it. Nothing's going to get in your way. Even if it's homework or something, nothing's going to get in your way, my friend. You got to keep going. Keep fighting. And make sure that your dreams will fulfill your fantasy. True that. Amen. True that. True that. Okay, so here's my advice. Usually when I make a YouTube channel, I usually do something. I usually um, like do something that's part of the arts. And it's all part of doing... It's all part of doing what you love. So if you're going to make a YouTube... So if you're going to make YouTube content for your YouTube channel, start from the heart. That's all there is. You just got to like uh, make, you just got to like your, make your own content, like make your own original ideas. And um, you, you got to have a, like a really good sense of humor. Got to have a really good sense of humor and make content so, so that everyone can understand. And it, and you and you know where it starts? It starts from the heart. If you put that much effort into it, to it, you can do anything. And yeah. Amen. That's really, really hard. For amen. Me yeah. Can I get an amen for that? Can I get an amen, amen. for that? Amen. For amen. That? <laughs> And the, Anyways, okay, Cameron, uh, the, the oh, lines are here I, for... Um, I see uh, it. All right, all right. Whenever you're ready. Simon, you ready? <clears throat> yeah. Maria, we brought you here for a reason. You took our fame and pride away from us just because you you of you making costumes. And we've had it. It's nothing personal, Maria. It's just business. My business. Sorry for not... Sorry, not sorry. Dearly. <laughs> wow. Nice. You should have seen my 10. face when I did that evil laugh. Wow. I was it, was actually, it was actually supposed to say darling. I can't quite read right. Oh. Dearly. Sorry. <laughs> Not sorry, darling. <laughs> That's fine. Honestly, I think sorry, not sorry, dearly kind of sounds good. Then... Yeah, yeah, that actually, you know what, that actually sounds good. Keep that, uh, keep that line. Yeah, keep it, keep like, it. Let's keep it, keep it. <laughs> All right, you want to do Sally's voice next? Uh, sure. All right. Um, I'm, I heard that she was supposed to, so, supposed to sound more in, innocent, but she didn't I mean, do anything for it. I mean, she's forced to do all this. Oh, yeah. If, if you didn't know that. So, fun fact about Sally... Did you know that Sally is actually the only innocent bad guy in the show? Oh, yeah. She's I actually know. pretty innocent. She was actually being dragged into um, Jesse's madness. And they became friends at kindergarten one time. 
And of course, Sally was used as, how do I put this? A huge country bag for boxing. Basically being used as a punching bag, getting all the blame, not getting credit, having her lunch money stolen, and the worst of all, having a huge wad of gum in her hair and not, and Jesse not giving a care. Uh... Hey, that rhymes. Oh, really? Yeah. Then you better save that. You better save that. You better save that. Save that. Save that. Save that. I will save that. Don't worry. And remember, I used to call you Baby Lamb Creations instead of Simon. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't mind if people call me Baby Lamb Creations since, well, that is technically what I am. But I'm also, I, I don't mind people referring to me by my real name. I just don't want people to know what the A on my last name stands for. If anyone asks, it's just it just stands for awesome. Anyways, um, before I send you in the lines, camera. Yeah. Sally has this innocent look, and she kind of sounds like if she was like she reminds me of the character Alfie from Undertale, having the nerd like glasses, but she doesn't wear glasses. Oh. She's just like she's really smart, and well. She has that innocent look, like she kind of sounds like the character Flaky from Happy Tree Friends. Don't ask, don't ask about what Happy Tree Friends is. Just don't. I've actually heard of Happy Tree Friends. And uh, there, there you go. You've just been scarred for life. Way to go. I've already... <laughs> no! That show gives me PTSD. Right, anyway. What? what? That, sh that show gives me PTSD. Oh, just like Flippy. Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way to go, Simon. Way to go. Now now you have the personality of Flippy. Just please do not freak out when it's in the middle of a war. Yeah. I'll try not to. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Before I send you in the lines, Cameron. Mm -hmm. For this voice, Sally has this innocent um type of tone. She's always braggy like like nagging about her liking anime or something and always having this um she gets really emotional really fast whenever oh. she has to do something bad to one of her old friends so oh, no. sounds like this girl got a whole hard life maria i, I can't do what jesse says or or else she will Invite me to her party. I'm sorry. I don't have to. I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Maria. But we have to push you off. But we have to push you off the waterfall. <laughs> Incredible. Okay, that's that almost, what I want. That almost that's made what me cry. I need. Thank you. That almost made me That's cry. I'm mean. not even kidding. It almost made you cry? Well, I felt... Oh, I Are wish I crying? could cry. Well, I wish I could cry. Wait, you can actually... Um, I wish I could cry too, but I'm just not emotional enough. <laughs> I'm already crying right now. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm just... That's what I want everyone to know. That, that intense moment that you're feeling. Like, of what's going to happen... It just hurts. Yeah. Honestly, it hurts when you have when you have to do what your best friend says or your or else you will lose your friendship forever. Yeah. But yeah. honestly but before, Oh wait, sorry, sorry. But honestly, I'd do the right thing. Um I I I would be worried about doing the right thing more than my friend um like tells me what to do the wrong thing. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Um, because honestly, sometimes doing the right thing is more important than doing what your friend wants you to do. If that what what he or she or they want you to do is bad, because honestly, that doesn't make, that doesn't make Sorry. them that does not make them a real friend at all. That's what it does. That's what I want everyone to know. Because you don't know who you can trust, either a friend, or a, a guy that you like, or something. There's a possible chance you can't trust them if they're really toxic. Precisely. Anyways, yeah, before we right. end this, 
Oh yeah. yeah. Before we end this, I'm gonna ask one more question. Simon. Yeah. I'm all ears. Uh, are you thinking? Ever since I made the Five Nights at Baby Land, and I want everyone to hear this out. Ever since I made the idea of Five Nights at Baby Land, I'm actually thinking of making a whole series about it. But are you willing to think about having these robotic clones being part of the franchise, including Doctor Lab? Well. Seeing how much effort you put into making these Five Nights at Freddy's incarnations of the, the entire Lamb Gang and Dr. Lab, well, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind having them part of the franchise. I mean, heck, that might even be pretty... That would make it make the series even more exciting. I mean, I want the series to go big and live, like action everywhere. Yeah. I mean, how did you think I got the idea of making... Stitch and Phil. I told you about these two. Yeah. And if they were in the show as well, they will be guaranteed the next the next new generation of the show for 2021. Or in 2020. Yeah. Yeah, and um that alternate universe with um Sonic and Pals. Precisely. That's right. Yeah. So Sounds I guess great. this is over, huh? The interview? Well, not yet. Before well, not before not I go, I just want to say, you know, I, you guys shared advice for anyone who wants to make YouTube videos, but I think it's time I share my advice as well. All right. Do it. Right. Go ahead. Okay. To those of you watching this right now, if you want to make a YouTube channel, then go for it. Do whatever makes you happy, because really, YouTube is a good place for you to like let your create. Let out your creativity and share it with other people. And if there are some people who don't like your content, then don't pay attention to them. Don't be like how I used to be and pay attention to haters or people who like make fun of you or anything. Because in the end, they're just random people on the internet and they can't hurt you. They can never define who you are. Only you can define who you are and you should trust who you are. And that's really all that matters because there will always be many more people who support you than there are those who don't. Well said, my friend. Amen. I, I wish well I could said. give you a virtual fist bump right now. Yeah, I'm just going to be uh, fist bumping the screen. Let's just pretend that it happened. <laughs> That's a good idea. I'm going to just headbutt my head on the phone. Ow. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> well, yeah. there you go. I did it for the fans. Yeah. Amen. For the fans. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Can I get an amen in the house? Amen. amen. No, it's like this. Amen. <laughs> oh, man. Sounds mean. like a howling wolf. <laughs> nice. Number four. Before we end this, I want to do this one more time before we end. Yeah. Hi guys, it's Maria. Hello. Maria. Oh. Hi, Maria. Hey there, it's Maria. I can't think of any voice to make. I hope you like this interview. I hope you like this video. If you did, be sure to find our fellow people who are in this video and subscribe to them. And if you want to see more of their content, be sure to comment down below anything you like. Yeah, and of course, get... what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, and don't forget, don't forget to subscribe to Cam. Don't forget to, don't forget to subscribe to Diamond Cami, Marissa the Junk Box, and of course, Baby Lamb Creation. Yeah. Yay! Th thank you, and. Yes, and this is me, Baby Lamb, and I just want yeah. to thank everyone. You guys are the best, and I love you. Thanks, well, we Baby, love Lamb. You too, Baby Lamb. Yeah, and thanks, Baby Lamb. Before, before we end this, I also want to give, since today is the first anniversary of Baby Lamb and Friends the movie, and we already got to acknowledge, 
um, I just want to give thanks to everyone who made the movie possible. And first and foremost, I want to give thanks to, of course, Cameron and Marissa for the insane amount of talent you put into your into the characters that I made, bringing so much life, thought, and personality and heart into them, and just making my series a lot better than it has ever been before. And I just love you guys, and I can't thank you enough. Hey, as a Jim Fox, as a mixed combination of two shows, Sonic and Steven, here's what Steven said. If every poor job weren't perfect, we wouldn't have hot dogs, my friend. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Yeah. And before also, that, oh. I can't wait to be on your episode. <laughs> Me too. Don't Me worry. Too. Don't worry, it'll come. But also, I want to give thanks to a bunch of other people who have been in the involved in the production and making of Baby Lemon Friends. For for instance, I want to give thanks to my good friend and my very close friend Derek McCormick, aka Uno Dash, who appeared in the movie at the beginning, narrating um the, the story. Yeah, thank you for you know taking time to be part of this. Thank you to Emmanuel Gaffey, who did an incredible job as Jonathan. Thank you to Ellie Mueller, who was also involved in the movie as the voice of Elliot. And by the way, if anyone watching this right now, please check out his channel, Kungi Mueller. And if you, you're interested in being his late night YouTube talk show series, Weeknight Update, then let him know. He's always, he's always looking for more people to participate. Thank you to Michael's iCast for allowing me to um, to recreate his random report segments and having the entire weeknight update cast on the movie. Thank you to Neb519, to Jonathan Ajima for your incredible performance as uh, Professor Flan. Thank you to Josh Polite as Osiris, Luca Dollar as Frankson, to Rebecca K. Lunetta for being the voice of Officer Patricia. You did an incredible job. To my to my in real life best friend Nick Cazares, thank you for also being part of this. Thank you to Jalen Russell, to JT Batman Nine Thousand for be, for also being one of the singing voices from the epilogue scene. Thank you to Dre Higby for helping promote the movie and for the incredible animations you make of Baby Lamb and Friends, and for inspiring me to redesign Bell. By the way. Thank you to Alex K, who has been supporting me like a whole lot throughout the past three years and for allowing me to use your cartoon synergy series in my movie. To Brandon Barney for voicing a cameo in this. To Milo Engine Productions. To Nick Alto for also taking the time to be a cameo in this. And to Lil Blue for your incredible performance as the Count. And I think you do a much better job voicing him than myself. But but most importantly, thank you to every single person in the Lamb Fam who helped make this movie possible. I've been thinking of doing this movie for like three years, and the fact that all of you gave me so much support, love, and encouragement to just make this possible, I wouldn't be where I am right now if it wasn't for all of you. And coincidentally, while we were doing this interview, I actually just reached 90,000 subscribers on YouTube. Woo! Woo! All right! I knew you could do it! Yay! Yeah, I honestly feel like I'm giving an acceptance speech right now, even though this movie didn't win anything. <laughs> <laughs> if it did win an Oscar. Yeah. If it won an Oscar, you would make that um, speech. Yeah, but I'd probably make it really short because I don't think they would allow a se an acceptance speech that long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, seriously, thank you to all of you for getting Baby Lamb Creations to where it is right now. I honestly, I know that times are tough right now, but and we're, a lot of us are in the same situation, but we can't forget that in many ways, we're still very lucky. And in many ways, I'm a lucky guy. Because, you know, before I didn't think I had a talent for anything. But YouTube helped me realize what kind of talent I had. And the fact that I got to interact and meet, make so many wonderful friends, it just, 
I really am one of the luckiest people on earth. Well, I am too. So am I, my friend. So am I, my amigo. Mi amigo. <laughs> Hola, amigo. What we go, amigo? Hasta luego, amigo. But yeah, seriously. Hasta luego, amigos. See you soon. But yeah. But I think we should say... I think we should have our characters sign off as well. If you don't mind. Okay, sure. I'll go first. Goodbye, everybody. And be sure to check out more Baby Lemon Friends videos and the series. Be sure to check out more of these guys' videos on their comments. Or, well... Maria, that, that wasn't my line, right? No, that wasn't your line. You messed it up. Ah, oh. oh, forget it. Be sure to like their videos, uh, subscribe, and I'm going to bed. Night. Yeah, uh, thank you everyone for watching Baby Lemon Friends the movie, for celebrating the first anniversary with us, and for just giving me and my friends so much love. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for just making me feel so... Uh... Uh, baby lamb, what was I supposed to feel again? Uh, ne never mind, cow. Well, you get what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Yes, thank you for making me feel like, th like the most popular dolphin to have ever lived. Yes, and let's not forget the most popular dog as well. Yeah, like me. Like, who even cares about Clifford the Big Red Dog? It's always Ricky. Uh, Ricky, I think that's enough. And this is Tails, Maria's best friend, signing off. Maria? I'm coming. Hi. Maria? Yes? Maria? What I think she to went say? to bed. Yeah, she, she went I'm to bed. I'm over here. I think I'm we should here. just sign off now. I'm over here. Yeah. Okay, see you all in the next video. And Bye. also, oh, one more thing. Just to let you know, next year, Baby <laughs> Lamb and Friends, is, Baby Lamb Creations is going to be five years old. So we're going to celebrate all year long. Until then, take care. Bye.